He's the only man to try and deny it. Needs to connect at least one here. If he can't do so, it's surely a lost cause. He's got his teammates coming in, but that's a free bomb plant there from Illuminar. We now see a five versus five retake. There's a little bit of utility here for the Izako boards. There's a smoke that's going to come over the top. That'll give them safe passage to creep up closer to this C4, and the kit might allow them to defuse it. But Illuminar... They've got all of these post plants. They can just spam away through these smokes. Surely come out on top. One for one trade kicks things off. But Markov's still alive and kicking. And as long as he's still there in the sandbags, there's no opportunity for this to fuse. The knife is coming through the smoke. Bogdan denies it. The coach with the slashes. And that's no defuse and no chance here for the Izako balls. As the bomb is too far gone, Markov will deal the finishing blow. A very, very messy round, especially given that there's actually Illuminar. They've already pressed past it. And as they start to peek out, Stomp, he will connect onto the first. Routine orb shot for him as the flash comes over the top. I was expecting Shui to maybe go for a wide peek there instead. Is to just keep Illuminar at a distance. As Shui pokes his head around the corner, though. Only a millimeter shown, and Maus rips it clean off. 4v4, the bombsite obtained once again. The C4 going down, and the smokes. It just keeps you and Zacho Bors at an arm's length. The Illuminar, they're looking fantastic right now here on Vertigo. And to be honest, the first three rounds weren't really much to go by because they were just against pistols and they were still having a hard time against it. Now they're against the rifles. They're still looking incredibly confident. We see the trades go even, but now the bomb, it's halfway ticked. Illuminar have got these post plant positions. The Nice Echo Balls, they're going in for this retake. They do find the kill. Teo should be able to jump on this bomb, but Grubby denies it. Double spray down. And now it comes down to Stomp. AWP in hand, not much time on the bomb. And there's no way he's going to fly in and try and get the defuse, especially without a kit. I think there was one on the floor, but regardless, Regardless, it would have been suicide. So Morels, he'll fall away, happily taking the round on his shoulders. Didn't even have to do an Evan eight, nine rounds, and that's where it starts to get complicated. And look at this pace, Bogdan, actually entry fragging. I mean, it kind of makes sense that his role would be that as like the information player, but he's even finding the opening picks. Grubby takes a lot of damage with the secondary engagement, but comes out on top. Shui, final, even when they do damage, they lose the bomb sites instantly. Their, their bomb site defenses have been horrendous. There seems to be nothing. the spams this round i wouldn't completely count them out a bit we see shui up close this flash comes in he's gonna swing into the angle morels has found one in the meantime and actually taking the control towards ali that was a must hit shot from stomp but he's found it now he's now in a one versus four and a stomp jumps on top of the boxes morels close oh this is painful to watch seeing the x-rays through the smoke seeing he now has to take the gunfires it's grubby and marcos playing on the front side of them the flashbang it's absolutely perfect and as shane swings he's good for both teo opens here and man she has an opportunity to win this engagement in mid no shame despite the fact that he's on five hp still comes out on top bogdan can finally damage they haven't taken any casualties though so i think they look to re-aggress onto this bomb site still a difficult task at hand man advantage now obtained that's a huge whiff from stomp follows up with the difficult shot up close shotgun orp now he's got a bit of a flank going but they're aware of it double snipers here to try and retake this site and oh no shane had he have peaked with the orp in hand he certainly could have hit that shot instead it's mono to swing and do so groovy coming in from behind stomp on the flank though and as marcos drops it's all on grubby to try and get this done he has eliminated stomp coming in from behind that alleviates a fair amount of pressure the nade it's absolutely perfect but in fact it actually gets them off the bomb as he plays around the edges of the smoke though the double swing from high and low and there's no opportunity that grubby finds both really nice stuff there for him to actually keep that one contentious and amount and look at this aggression from shane he's gonna spot out the first head with the x-ray that we can see it's absolutely crushing that he didn't just peek sight stomp with the sniper ready to pounce the rotations have come in off of the back of the util that's been thrown but mono one tapped out the server they continue to press in here stomp does follow up beautiful spray down there from teo he's had a huge impact in these last couple of rounds and all of a sudden the round of the luminars for the taking has fallen away from them morales can follow up but not after taking a dink and it all comes down to coach bogdan 20 seconds on the clock there's no way he's going to be saving this one in a two versus one but he knows the orb somewhere around here goes for the jiggle peak pre all right means that now, Zacco boards, if they continue this pressure, we will actually see a 9 6 half for them, which is a really great half for the CT side of Vertigo. Nice opening kill made any noise. This means that 
The Zacco Balls aren't really expecting this at all. And as soon as the peak comes through, it's going to take Stomp by surprise. But he's a man that loves surprises. Connects onto Grubby, gives them a man advantage. And with 30 seconds on this clock, Illuminar, they need to get a wiggle on as they continue to press forward. Marcos, desperate to try and find this opening. Orpix spots out a shoulder. Connects onto Stomp there. It's a beautiful flick, but it's not the kill they're looking for. And Teo once again doubles up. The spray to find two headshots. He has been incredibly impactful this game. Dean. As Illuminar try to recover this one ever so slightly and bring themselves to seven. But once again, it's Shui to find the opening pick towards ramp. And there's so much discipline on this man. With the gap in the smoke, he could have stuck around, but instead deploys those nades, falls away. Teo in the meantime falls. That's the refrag there from Illuminar. And with a headshot coming in towards this beast on the site. And it's the last round of the half. There's no saving time here for the Izako balls. They're just getting themselves into position for this retake. And it seems like we're going to see a triple prong retake. They're going to come in from all angles. This massively requires them to win the Angels, though, because there's not really much trade potential. And Shui, as he spots out the head, he'll be able to tap onto Bog down there. That's a sniper eliminated. Deploys this smoke. Seems to be fully aware that there's someone up close and personal. Needs to make sure he clears this hard left angle, though. And all oh, timing on the peak there doesn't quite work out. Shui spots out the secondary man, but it's a little bit too late. Mouse and Grubby able to finish. And they take it. They can tie up this score line, and it should propel them into the lead. Great Molotov there to clear out the sandbags player. Does tons of damage to him, and the Glocks are able to finish him off. It's Teo to find the opening pick. And he, as I mentioned before, is just on fire today. Spamming through these smokes. Desperate to try and connect onto something or someone. And that's just not the case at all. Bogdan takes a dink right through that smoke. And as he pokes his head up towards heaven, the bullets firing away should finally be able to finish him off. Oh, he's down to nine points of health. And Shane, running out of ammo, has to run out and retrieve himself a new pistol. That's the issue when you've got those USPs. You can't really spam through the smoke. You haven't got too many bullets to work with. Shane, though, from the distance, able to find one more. As he spots out further members, this is great. Diffuse comes through, but on the edges of the smoke, they're able to spot it out. They can... Oh, I think that Shui will actually die to the bomb here as well. I don't think he can get himself far away enough. Yeah, there we go. He dies to the C4. Doesn't really matter at all. Doesn't land where they want it to and does a, a, a fair amount of damage onto the Izako balls themselves. As they press in towards mid, they're taking a lot of damage from these early engagements, but they are able to come out on top with a gunfight. Shui, he spanned down to seven points of health, but stays alive. The Deagles, this is where they're most deadly. With all of that early damage dealt from the nades, it means that these body spams, they can do everything right now on Morels. He knows it. As Marcos finds the shot with the scout onto Shane, it all comes down to Shui here. Seven points of health, a two on one, and now two rifles to contend with. The C4 is planted. He needs to get timing on these engagements and all the timing actually works out in his favor. I don't think Marcos has spotted him out here. This is perfect, but no, as he jumps back around the corner, Shui peeks at the wrong moment, and Illuminar, they will come out on top in their force by and actually find themselves a couple of rifles off the back of it. We see the AK and the Galil all retained, or retrieved, I should say. It's got a lot of firepower here for Illuminar. They've actually invested into a couple of M4s and then accompanied by that saved AK and Galil. They've got quite a bit to work with. Nice opening pit there from Shui though. He takes a ton of damage from the engagement, but wins it regardless. Then puts himself into a head angle that's not spammable. Can connect onto Marcos and Teo. He finds the trio. Three kills found here for the Isaac Abors without taking a single casualty. And to be honest, I talked about how the first half was close, but it went in streaks and wasn't this back and forth affair. Seems like we're seeing the complete opposite here in the second half. Mouse is able to do a hell of a lot of damage, but no kills found though. And there we go. Further util deployed. Only a smoke and a flash for Illuminar to work with. And that's to try and keep these members away from the sites and potentially retake it if needs be. The information, it just doesn't seem to have been relayed that they've taken mid control. What on earth is that? That's so messy, Bogdan. He spotted them coming out of mid. He's found himself an opening pick, but he's not called it to his B players. And they're going to. It didn't really work out for them on the retake, if I recall correctly. So that's the only time we've seen it. This time, though, Marcos, nice and aggressive there towards Ali. Can pick off Shui early. Gives them the man advantage. Completely untradeable as well, unless he re-aggresses here, which he actually tried to, but the flashbang kept him away. Teo needs to get the timing perfect. And there we go. Swings back around as Morel just goes for the peak. And there we go. Ties things up into a four-on-four. Four. Marcos still getting aggressive here towards Ali. He's making noise as well, so they know he's here. He actually kind of wants people to fight into him. He's so confident with this sniper, so confident that he'll connect the shots. Now he calls for the smoke so that he can fall away and support towards the site. In fact, still wants to play this aggressive angle. And there we go. Turns the flash. That is perfect there from Marcos. Really nice shot from him.
gives them a two-man advantage to work with. A mono and stomp. So they start to regress. Marcos gets his... You kind of expect him to be at, at the bottom as the coach that's the, the last minute standing. But what would be really rough here for him? Completely eliminated. And with the man advantage, the Izako Bors should be able to take this A site. A C4, it will go down. But Marcos right through the smoke. Doubles down. That's unreal. The first shot was impressive enough. The second is insane. And if he knows where to spam to deny the plant, he might be able to do so. But no. He's about 30 centimeters too far right. And he can't deny it. Man advantage here, though, for Illuminar as they go for this retake. The issue is, is the snipers ordinarily aren't the right tools for the job. And Mao going over the top isn't going to connect as he just ducks down. The smoke going down. The diffuse coming in and the spams. Oh, they're just not connecting. Shui, he just can't stop it. And the spams from this corner. It all comes down to timing. Still nobody watching it. And as the nades start to rain over, I think he'd call for a flash here before he goes for the peak, but no, instead just goes in dry, doubles down as he finds himself too. That's the man advantage for them to work with and further damage dealt onto Shane, who was able to win the engagement, but only has 10 points of health to spare. You want to see them peek off the back of some flashes here, but they haven't really got them to work with. Teo does win the first engagement regardless, as he gets tacked down to 12 HP. It's a three-on-three -three situation with Izako Balls with no health and no utility. They're going to have to peek into these angles dry, and the orps, they will fire through for more. These double snipers have been an integral part of the Illuminar success, and with it, they're actually going to be able to take the lead. Stomp, the AWP, I don't know why he's diving in for this plant. This is really, really ambitious. And he might even get knifed in the process. No. So manages to no-scope Marcos. That is uh, able to contest that map point. Try and take it to OT. That's not where they want to be, though. They want to win this round and try and claw this one back. Playing a dangerous game. I do really like this angle, though. It's something that often goes overlooked. We have seen many times, even at pro level, the player actually fall off here. But look at this. Morel is able to deny the plant. Can swing out and find another. And actually, off the back of his efforts put Illuminar into the lead. A man advantage to work with. I thought Marcos was going to hit that shot all day long. He's been so consistent with that sniper. But as he peeks in to stomp, he will lose the duel. Tail and stomp, the two members that have actually found all the kills this round, need to find even more in the two versus two. Both players on half HP in the two versus two situation. And Illuminar, they have got 100 each. Only a single smoke between all four members to work with here. And Teo, as he peeks in dry, loses the duel. Grubby's able to trade. And oh my, he goes for the wide swing. Stomp, he hit. He's got plenty of time to dance around and try and find some util. Incredible there from Grubby. The sniper. This time around, Morales is the up close and personal man to take the jewels. The flashbang looks like it's ready to be deployed, but instead, Illuminar, they're going dry. This is absolutely perfect. Isaac Bors, they were playing anti flash and they've fallen to every single member here. The of the Isaac Bors is that they've got the C4 on their back. So much utility still here for Illuminar, though. And as that final smoke's been deployed, Mouse is going to find one more grubby.